User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way. Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at Ugtastic.com. Hi, it's Mike again with Ugtastic. Today I'm sitting down with Anna Lear, who is a community manager with Stack Exchange. Stack Exchange is a pretty large site, and if you're a developer, you've probably have spent a, a good deal of time either asking questions or, or getting answers uh, uh, from the site. Uh, thanks, thanks a lot for sitting down with me, Anna. I really appreciate it. It's good to be here. Thanks. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about what is Stack Exchange overall, and what is a community manager, and, and how did you get involved in that? Sure. Uh, well, Stack Exchange is by now a network of 100 question and answer websites. Uh, we started out with uh, Stack Overflow. Um, which is a site for programmers of all kinds and pretty much any language. And um, our basic goal is to provide a place or several places uh, where people can come with their questions and they can get expert answers uh, on whatever topic that they happen to be interested in. So as a community manager, uh, I'm part of a team. Uh, there's about six of us. Uh, what we do is we try to uh, work with different sites and different communities and try to teach them uh, about what makes a good Q&A website, uh, what kind of um, things make up sites that are truly helpful. Uh, so what we usually do is we spend a lot of time... Um, well, e okay, let me back up for a second. Uh, each, uh, each site, uh, including Stack Overflow, uh, has a corresponding meta site. Uh, that allows its community to kind of gather and talk amongst themselves and determine how the site is going to run um, and handle different issues that come up. So as community managers, we spend a lot of time monitoring those meta sites uh, and jumping in to help out with answers and kind of sharing our expertise uh, and lessons learned over the past uh, several years. What are some of these meta sites? Well, like, what is a meta site? Uh, it is literally pretty much exactly the same as any main site. So let's say Stack Overflow. Uh, on the main site, on Stack Overflow, you will have questions about programming, uh, you know, C Sharp, Java, whatever. Uh, on the meta site, uh, the only thing that's on topic is Stack Overflow the site. Okay. So people would come in with questions about why, um, why a certain question was closed, for example, or uh, what kind of things are on topic. They might want a clarification, or they might want to say, well, we have a couple different tags that need to be merged. Can somebody help us out? And that happens basically with every community. We provide a way for the community to self-govern like that. Okay, so it's a, it's a way to say, oh, you posted this WordPress configuration. The, uh, Stack Overflow isn't the right place to do that. Check out WordPress. Dot, is it WordPress at Stack Exchange? Yeah. So I mean, basically, you you help redirect people to the right place. Or? Potentially, yeah. If somebody came to Stack Overflow and they posted a WordPress configuration question and it got um, well, now it's put on hold. We recently rolled out some changes to uh, make closing a little nicer. Um, <laughs> but uh, they might come to Meta and they can they can ask why that happened. Uh, and somebody would say, hey, we have this other site, you know, your question would be more welcome there. Okay. So you're you're dealing with a lot of, of uh, developers who are maybe dealing with an issue and they're trying to get information. Do you ever uh, have to diffuse any kind of situations or have anybody get really angry over a question being closed? Uh, it, it certainly happens, uh, for sure. Uh, our site moderators... Uh, actually take care of a lot of those uh, disputes. Uh, that's what moderators are there for, is to kind of keep things running smoothly. Uh, they're all volunteers, and they're doing a fantastic job. Um, but once in a while, we as community managers also step in. Uh, I don't know that it happens a lot, but uh, there's definitely situations when somebody um, gets really upset, and we have to be very careful about... Um, Explaining to them how the site works without uh, invalidating what they're feeling and invalidating what their experience is. And so you you work with a team of six people, and you mostly interact through Meta, or do you work with the moderators? Um. Yes, to both. <laughs> so we make heavy use of chat rooms. Um, 
So uh, Stack Overflow and Stack Exchange has a chat system as well. So we have internal chat rooms um, that we use within the team and across the teams at Stack Exchange. And we also have moderator-only chat rooms where we talk to moderators and kind of provide more um, real-time interaction. So, and as far as as the kind of information you're probably seeing, I'm just curious, has there ever been, as you're going into moderating things, I mean, I'm sure there's some of the uh, uh, questions where you're like, uh, why, why are people asking this? Don't they read the FAQ? Uh, but have you ever read anything about like, wow, that's really, uh, is there any like questions that stick out in your mind that you might have seen or moderated or helped move into the right location? And like, wow, that, I never thought about that before. That was actually really interesting. Um, that's a good question. <laughs> I mean, th there's a ton of interesting questions that come through um, yeah. pretty much every day. I don't know that anything really sticks out right off the top of my head. Um, <laughs> oh, no, that, that was one. Oh, um, yeah, this is not going to be helpful. Something on Stack Overflow that ended up talking about railroads. Oh, really? <laughs> I think. That's a good version. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so they... Yeah, well, now, yeah, now watch somebody try and find it, and it's going to be something completely different. But, uh, yeah, no, nothing that's uh, off the top of my head that I can like, point to right now. Just maybe, the, is there so much information that you have to troll through to, to, to manage that it's not much that you can actually read? Uh, pretty much, yeah. I mean, I don't spend a lot of my time... Um, anymore, unfortunately, uh, like actually browsing Stack Overflow and reading questions for kind of personal um, enjoyment. Uh, most of the things I end up seeing right now are actually problematic in some way. Uh, somebody emailed us uh, to get support or I'm responding to a flag um, for moderator attention or something like that. So I end up seeing a lot of kind of average type stuff. Once in a while, though, I mean, I still I still watch, like, Hacker News and all that kind of stuff, so great questions still happen, and uh, they get promoted in those ways. Yeah, and um, as far as dealing with people that are uh, looking at trying to get their, you know, again, with the questions trying to be answered, um, are there any myths that you've run into where people make assumptions, like, uh, I know on Reddit people often get angry at the mods and there's occasionally moderator revolts where they try to take down a moderator who people disagree with uh, how they're, how, they're uh, uh, how, how a moderator decided a certain set of questions should, or posts should be handled uh, or changed rules. Uh, is there any, uh, has there been anything like that with Stack Exchange where you've, you've had people directly come in conflict with a moderator or question? Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, there's many, many examples on Metastack Overflow of that. Um, one that uh, kind of <laughs> sticks in mind uh, is um, not the last moderator election, but the one before it, I think. Uh, we elected four moderators, um, and uh, one of them, uh, I think at the time he was 19, and uh, somebody, uh, and I think he closed the question, I don't exactly remember the specifics anymore, but somebody came to Meta and basically wrote this giant rant about how teenage moderators are ruining Stack Overflow. Oh, really? And it is the worst thing that has ever happened. So it was basically like he picked specifically on that moderator, and um, things just went downhill from there. <laughs> it was interesting you mentioned moderator, moderator elections. How does that work? Uh, so about once a year... Uh, give or take, uh, we run a moderator election. So what happens is all of our moderators are volunteers. Uh, and um, when the site, when a site is still in public beta, um, I should probably explain that too. <laughs> so when somebody, uh, well, before we create a new site in the network, um, we work uh, from a list of site proposals uh, that are brought to us by anybody on the internet. Uh, we have a special site for that, Area 51. Um, and once a proposal uh, gathers a certain uh, number of followers and people who kind of commit to making that site a reality, uh, that site goes into a private beta for about a week to kind of hash out the immediate issues and whatnot, and then it goes into a public beta. And during that time, it's open to anybody. Anybody can participate. And for that period, we appoint moderators based on 
a few criteria, people who were active early in the site, who kind of showed aptitude uh, for community moderation. But once the site graduates from public beta, uh, we hold moderator elections. Uh, so this gives the opportunity uh, for any community members uh, who are interested to nominate themselves uh, and um, kind of, you know, it, basically they, they come back, they come forth with uh, their platform uh, and kind of explain how they want to make the site better, what, you know, what attracts them uh, to being a moderator, what they like about the site. And uh, then people vote for them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, so we have an entire system built for that. It's basically um, open STV. Um, so it's, um, oh man, the, the way it works is, uh, somewhat complicated, <laughs> uh, and I can never quite remember that there's a meta post on how exactly the votes are counted, but it's basically people pick their top three, um, picks and then, um, the first, the, there's a count of like first votes, um, that a person gets. And then once they hit a threshold, they're elected. And then, like other votes that are cast for them, trickle down to other people, and yeah. The Australian voting system. Possibly, <laughs> not too familiar with that. Uh, it's it's it's. Uh, I, I'm not gonna be able to explain it well, but it's basically it sounds like you have three candidates, and then you vote, and there's a way to hash out which one actually got the most votes of the three candidates. Uh, I'll link to it in the show notes. Because <laughs> I'm not from Australia. I just know that it's been explained to me by an Australian. Uh, that's how it worked. Um, so, um, okay, so, you know, just uh, to speak personally about you, how did you get involved with Stack Exchange? Uh, so, I mean, you talked about how moderators get elected, mm -hmm. but how, how did the community manager position evolve, and, and how did you end up becoming one? Well, how it evolved is slightly before my time. Um, from what I know, uh, uh, Robert Cartano, uh, he's our director of community development. Uh, he was the first community manager that uh, Stack Exchange uh, ever had. And um, all I know about that is that at some point he was approached by Jeff Atwood and they worked something out, <laughs> which is basically how pretty much everything I believe got uh, done in those days. Um, but uh, eventually, you know, the team grew. Uh, by the time I got to it, uh, I'm, a, I'm a software developer by trade. Uh, so I joined Stack Overflow. Um, didn't really spend a lot of time on it. Uh, but when Programmer Stack Exchange launched, uh, I kind of really got into that. And um, it was um, it was it was somewhat controversial uh, at the time. It, uh, it, it was uh, proposed as a place where everything that's off topic on Stack Overflow can live. And that really didn't work. Uh, it just really created a terrible site, uh, and eventually it evolved, you know, and it and now it became kind of you know the the whiteboard side of Stack Overflow, where you can kind of hash out you know software practices and design all that kind of stuff. But anyway, um, I was elected a moderator on Programmers, so I nominated in the first election and ran, um, and from there I just discovered kind of the rest of the network. Um, and I spent more and more time on metas, uh, and uh, I eventually went back to Stack Overflow and became a moderator on Stack Overflow. Uh, and from there, I got the job. Yeah, is, is everybody on the community manager team coming through a similar path? or? Um, not necessarily. Uh, unfortunately, she's no longer with us, but we had um, um, a community manager, Arthi, uh, who did not have a developer background. Uh, she uh, got on the team through an internal... Um, arrangement. Uh, I think right now, everybody on the team has some sort of development past. Okay, so everybody has a little bit of uh, skin in the game, so to speak, of uh, yeah. understanding what what is being talked about and, and a concept of what is what is the, the um, spirit of the of the conversation on, on Stack Exchange. Because it's people who are marketing experts, it's people who are developers who are passionate about these topics and are good at working with a lot of people. Well, on Stack Overflow, for sure. Um, I mean, we have we have a lot of sites uh, on topics that aren't really developer-oriented. Uh, we have a site about cooking, photography, uh, video games, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, there's definitely sites where none of us have any experience with whatsoever, uh, but a lot. But most of the lessons that we've learned from Stack Overflow and from other sites, they really just translate across the board. 
So, okay, well, thank you very much for taking the time to sit down with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you.